mass and numbers of entities. So starting with the mass of a substance and finding out how many particles of one sort or another in there. And again, we could convert right down to atoms. We could stop at molecules or if it's an ionic formula unit. And if it is a formula unit, we could find out the number of a particular type of ion in there. Or if it is a molecule, we could find out how many atoms are in there as well. So if you are looking for the amount of things, entities, particles within a substance, you can start with the mass and you can get to that number of entities using this concept of moles. So a mole has a certain amount of particles in it. And if you know the molar mass of something, you know how to convert between its mass and how many moles there are. And we know how many particles are in a mole, so we can then, using Avogadro's number, convert to the amount of those entities. And again, depending on the type of substance you're dealing with, those entities will be different things. For example, if you're dealing with a molecular substance, it is made up of molecules. Those molecules are made up of atoms. If you're dealing with an ionic substance, its entities, its pieces, are formula units. And of course, those formula units are made up of a particular ratio of ions within those formula units. Then, of course, you could do the opposite. You could start with the amount of things that are in your particular substance. So let's say you had a giant number of atoms. You could find out what the mass would be by doing the same process, but backwards. So first example that we will work through, we'll do two of them. This is number of whole entities. So um, this is just looking for atoms and not pieces of a particular entity. So this is a, for example, um, you could solve for molecules and not atoms within a molecule or formula units, or, but not ions within a formula unit. And to keep it very straightforward, we're gonna be dealing with the metal. So the pieces that make it up are just going to be atoms. So if a two inch tungsten cube weighs 2.3 kilograms, how many atoms would be in that cube? And again, we're going to start with our mass. And if we go to moles, we will then be able to go from moles to atoms. So most of these conversions that we're going to be doing this year are going to be involving moles. And so the key is first converting to moles. And then from there, you can go to particles, entities, or you could go back to mass either way. This one, we are looking for the number of atoms. So we start off with the number that we're given. And again, we are not using formulas to do this. We are using conversion factors. That way you'll never make a mistake in how it's set up. You'll never put the numerator where the denominator is supposed to be. Um, you'll always get it in the correct way. So our conversion factor first, and nice thing with that is we won't need equations to deal with metric conversions as well. Um, we are going to set up a conversion factor that has kilograms on the bottom, because that's what we start with. And we know our molar masses are in grams per mole. So we have to convert to grams. So if we put kilograms on the bottom, they will cancel out. And notice I am using the label of W here. So we talked about uh, the, the symbol for tungsten. I'm um, talking about putting the label on the unit as well. So when you have more than one substance, like when you're doing reactions, you don't get them confused. So kilograms on the bottom of our conversion factor, grams on the top, and that will give us our answer in grams. And you can probably do that one in your head. Um, then we're going to take our this is our mass in grams. Now we can use our molar mass. So we're going to take that number. We're going to run it through another conversion factor. But for this one, we are going to need the molar mass, so capital M, of tungsten or wolfram um, is 183.84. And again, pull that off the periodic table. That is how many grams are in a single mole. So that is our conversion factor to get from mass to moles. So we're going to set that up as our second conversion factor. And again, we know grams is going to go on the bottom because that's the unit we want to cancel out. We want to go to moles. And so we end up taking our 2,300 grams, multiply by one, divide by 183, and we should end up with somewhere around 12.51. Um, notice the sig digs. I know that my answer, let's draw some attention up here. Oh, can't go backwards. Um, our answer is going to have to be in three sig digs. So I'm keeping four sig digs throughout the calculation, and I'll end with a final answer in three sig digs. Always a good idea to carry one extra sig dig during your calculations and then answer in the proper number for your final answer. So I'm going to take my number of moles, and again, I'm, I'm going to atoms, so I will then use my conversion factor, Avogadro's number, moles on the bottom to cancel out. And I know that in one mole, there are 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms. And in this case, this is 
atoms of tungsten. So I run that through my calculator, moles cancel out, and my final answer is going to be in atoms. And our precision in our question is three sig digs, so I need to make sure our answer is also going to be in three sig digs. Now realize you can do that same question a lot faster. There's no point in writing the answer to each step and then rewriting it and running it through another conversion. So instead of doing it in three separate steps, you can do it all at once. You can say, okay, I'm going to take my kilograms and I'm going to convert to grams. That will get rid of my units of kilograms. I'll be in units of grams. I can then use my molar mass as my second conversion. I don't need to write the answer. I can just set up one conversion factor after another um, so that I can just do the calculations through there. If you're not writing down the answers in between, you're less likely to make a carrying or copying error, and therefore you'll be much more likely to get your answers continually correct. This first conversion factor converts to grams, but again, I'm, I'm looking for atoms, so I don't want to stop there. So I use another conversion factor, the molar mass, to get rid of units of grams. I'm now in units of moles, still not yet atoms, so I need to use another conversion factor that will get rid of my units of moles, and now I'm in units of atoms. That's what I want my answer to be in, so that's the last conversion factor that I need. Then I can pick up my calculator, 2.30 times 1,000, divided by 183.84 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23 should give me 7.53 times 10 to the 24. Again, three sig digs in my answer because I have three sig digs of precision as my minimum amount of precision in my question. All right, what if you have a part of an entity that you need to calculate for? So for example, we know that water has the formula H2O, we, we have its molar mass here. Um, and so if the question was asking for how many hydrogen atoms are in one liter of water, we'd first have to find out, okay, we've got a liter of water. Um, we've got to find out how many moles of water that is. So we're gonna have to go to mass and then convert to moles. And once we're in moles, we'll be able to get to particles or entities. And these entities are h two O. So we know for every single one we have, we have two hydrogens. So if we know how many molecules we have, we can double that number and we'll have the number of hydrogens. So same process. We are starting with our one liter of water here. So a conversion factor will get us out of liters and into milliliters because we should have memorized that one milliliter is equal to one gram in terms of mass. So this would then give us our mass of water. And again, you could probably jump to that step in your head. But once we have our mass of water, as is often the case, we want to convert to moles. Moles will get us between mass and number of particles. And since it's chemistry, we're always talking about the particles. Mass is an easy way to weigh them. We're constantly converting between mass and number of particles, and our molar mass is the way to do that. We need to convert to moles first. So to get rid of grams, we're going to put grams on the bottom of our conversion factor. And again, we are using the molar mass to convert between mass and moles. So we're taking our 1,000 grams of water, and we are dividing by 18.02, and that should give us 55.5-ish. I'm keeping one extra sig dig during my calculations. Um, again, I know I'm going to answer in three sig digs, but I'm going to keep one extra while I'm doing my calculation. So now I know that this bottle of water, this one liter of water, contains 55.49 moles of water. Again, we want to know how many hydrogen atoms that is. So if we can find out how many molecules of water there are, double it, we'll have our hydrogen atoms. So we take our 55.5 moles of water and we use Avogadro's number to go from moles to particles. So that is our next conversion factor. And again, I know moles goes on the bottom because that's the unit I want to get rid of. And molecules is going to carry through to my answer. So in one liter of water, there's going to be 3.342 times 10 to the 24 molecules of H2O. So we're almost there. If that was what the question was asking for, we'd be done. But we want to know how many hydrogen atoms are there. So whatever the amount of molecules there are, we know that there will be two atoms of hydrogen for every single molecule. So we're using that as, we're using basically the formula. We know this is H2O. So we're using the formula to show the ratio of, if we have one molecule of water, there are two atoms of hydrogen in it. So we're using that as our last conversion factor. And so molecules of water will cancel out, atoms of hydrogen will carry through, and you end up with 6.68 times 10 to the 25 atoms of hydrogen in one liter of water. And again, we can do this in one step. We don't need to write out the answer for each of the steps. 
And in fact, if we do, we'll be more likely to write something incorrectly. So if you take your one liter of water, we can convert to mass. And again, liters will cancel out, milliliters will cancel out, and we'll be in mass. We want to go to moles because we're going to get two particles. So we need to be in moles in order to do that. So mass will cancel out by using the molar mass. That will give us our answer in moles. We want to cancel out our moles. It'd be nice if this would all fit one horizontal line, but it won't. So I'm going to continue on to the next line. That'll get us to molecules of water. Of course, we then have to cancel out molecules of water to get to atoms of hydrogen specifically. And we get our 6.68 times 10 to the 25 atoms of hydrogen.